in in lecture 1 of module 6 we have looked into the fundamentals governing you know, fundamentals of uh, concrete strength or the factors those govern uh, fundamental factors those govern the concrete strength namely the water cement ratio which governs the page strength and also governs the paste aggregate interface strength which in turn controls the strength of the concrete. Today we shall look into the contribution of aggregate and other factors. We shall look into the contribution of aggregate and other factors. So, general outline of our discussion would be general outline of our discussion would be Paste aggregate bond first we will look, in, look into you know how paste strength controls the paste aggregate bond, how water cement ratio, surface roughness and chemical composition controls the paste aggregate bond because this is what we have seen yesterday there is the most important aspect that controls the strength of concrete and the ITZ uh, you know controls the strength of concrete. So, we are look, going to look into that ITZ bonded strength between paste and aggregate. Then we shall look into then we shall look into uh, effect of aggregates properties on strength namely strength of aggregate how it affects the strength of concrete modulus of elasticity size of aggregate and aggregate content. And lastly we shall look into effect of air entrainment compaction and age right. So, that would be that would how it, we have organized our discussion today and uh, uh, following it up let us look into first the paste aggregate bond. Now, if we look at if we look at uh, this uh, uh, diagram if we look at this diagram uh, which shows uh, you know bond strength which shows the bond strength flexural strength of paste, bond strength of paste and aggregate and ratio of bond to paste flexural strength right. Okay. So, curve 1 curve 1 for example, it is a it, it this shows the uh, flexural strength of paste curve 2 this shows the flex you know bond strength between the bond strength of paste aggregate bond. And if one calculates out the ratio, the ratio works out like this, you know. And you, you can see that it varies from about maximum around 0.8 to somewhere the minimum around 0.6. So few things becomes clear from this that the bond strength is lower than the paste flexural strength. You know why flexural strength? This was some early work by Alexander. Uh, which, which which was done why flexural strength I mean basically it is a measure of the tensile strength and uh, failure between the bond and the aggregate is due to the tension. So, therefore, he looked into the tensile strength of the paste itself and then looked into the bond strength and they obtained the ratios. Now, two things becomes clear that bond strength is lower than the paste strength and this reinforces our idea which we have said earlier that it is the ITZ which governs the strength of concrete and we have also seen that till about 70 percent of the ultimate load uh, no cracks really develops into the paste it is only at the interface the strength devel uh, you know cracks develops. So, uh, that that is actually reconfirmed if we look back into this. Uh, so, the paste you know the paste aggregate bond that is very important that is what is confirmed through this. A second issue is confirmed is that this bond strength is not necessarily proportional to the strength of the paste itself. So, for example, although uh, this 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 place you know this has got the highest uh, paste strength, but this is not necessarily the highest paste strength in fact, highest paste strength see you see here. This is the least paste flexural strength, but least bond strength is somewhere there. So, they are not really necessarily related as you can see these are not necessarily related these are not necessarily related you know one is to one correspondence is not there although uh, some sort of relationship do exist. So, this is what we see bond strength is lower than that of paste bond strength is not necessarily proportional to the cement strength 
and ITZ governs the concrete strength. So, ITZ governs the concrete strength that is what we see right. So, this is the first thing we see. Then continuing with the same paste aggregate bond, we can see the effect of water cement ratio and surface roughness. Now, bond between paste aggregate is mostly mechanical, physical and in very few cases chemical that is what we should see. You know if you remember we talked about that bond between the aggregate or the bond generated by the cement paste itself are by and large are the van der Waals kind of bond with the paste and some of course chemical bond between the crystals do exist, ex exist in case of the gel themselves. Now when it we are talking about the bond between the paste and the aggregate it is mostly physical of this van der Waals kind of bond and some can be mechanical simple interlocking simple interlocking in the you know in the if supposing the surface of the aggregate is very porous where the paste goes in the very fine pores are there where paste can get in. So, there will be a kind of mechanical interlocking possible. So, the bond between paste and aggregate is mechanical physical and in very some few cases it can be chemicals also as chemical also as we shall see later on. So, now how would this bond be affected by water cement ratio? Well, we have seen in details yesterday the water cement ratio affects the bond in a manner similar to that it does to compressive strength because higher the water cement ratio let me again uh, recapitulate the idea that we talked in the last lecture. Higher the water cement ratio there will be more bleed trap water there will be more porosity of the uh, uh, you know um, uh, ITZ porosity uh, and also shrinkages and wall effect etc. So, all these are related to the water cement ratio higher the water cement ratio ITZ porosity is higher and therefore, water cement ratio affects the page strength it affects the concrete strength higher the water cement ratio strength reduces in both the cases same thing happens to the bond strength also higher the water cement ratio bond strength will be less because there will be more bleed water trapping there will be more uh, poor bond uh, due to you know poor poor bond essentially because of shrinkage effects and uh, uh, wall effects etc etc because uh, uh, porosity there itself would be larger. Effect of surface roughness this is very important and it is evident more in low water cement ratio concrete. In fact, there is a difficulty in measuring this kind of thing because how do you measure? You put an aggregate and put a paste together with it and try to find out how much load it can withstand you know tensile load it can withstand. So, that is how you can find out what is the bond strength. But uh, changing the surface roughness keeping all other properties of aggregate constant namely its mineralogical composition constant or uh, sizes constant it becomes difficult. So, uh, uh, you know this this test is really difficult, but some tests were done earlier and it was observed that if you have high surface roughness, roughness it can uh, increase the strength with you know aggregate with higher surface roughness can increase the strength at low water cement ratio as much as about 38 percent increase were observed in some cases at low water cement ratio. However, as you as the water cement ratio increases this increase in strength due to surface roughness tend to reduce down and at about 0.65 there is no increase in strength due to surface roughness because the water cement ratio low water cement ratio becomes so governing that whether you have a rough surface or a smooth surface it really take, makes not much of a difference. So, but at low water cement ratio this has got some effect. So, rough porous surface fine porous surface would have a tendency to develop better bond. Now, uh, slightly digressing from this issue, you know rounded aggregate if they are rough they are fine, but quite often gravels may have very smooth surface uh, like playing marbles you know they are supposing they are there even their shape is uh, not rounded, but anything they would have poor bond. But uh, uh, usually round, gravel sometime may have very smooth surface it is the surface which is important not the shape, shape actually will dictate shape actually dictates the uh, shape actually dictates the uh, packing characteristics shape actually dictates the packing characteristics but uh, uh, roughness dictates the bond strength. 
So, shape dictates the packing characteristics, roughness dictates the uh, bond strength, right. So, uh, rounded you know there can be some kind of misconceptions and rounded aggregate would not provide bond that is not necessary, surface roughness is important. Uh, but rounded aggregate will give you better packing and therefore reduce down the water requirement, improves the workability. So, one has to see which effect is dominating, uh, quite often it may be the uh, you can design accordingly, there is no problem. Even if there is little bit of reduction in the bond strength because of the smoothness of the surface, you can just reduce down the water cement ratio a little bit to get the adequate strength. So, one can design the mix knowing the properties or characteristics of the aggregate, but the, uh, the, the, the fact remains the surface roughness improves the bond strength especially at low water cement ratio, but very high water cement ratio it has got little effect. Shape does not really directly affect the strength, but it affects the packing density. So, if you have a rounded aggregate with rough surface that might give you a good bond much better than anything else. So, that is the uh, idea that is the idea. Okay. So, we can follow it up further and look into paste aggregate bond the chemical composition of the aggregate. You know most of the aggregates are supposed to be inert like if you have quartzite, granite etcetera most of these aggregates are inert. So, therefore, they are inert to everything therefore, they are inert to the cement also. So, there is hardly any chemical bond existing, but some aggregates do show a little bit of uh, bonding characteristics chemical bonding characteristics right. Uh, for example, those extrusive rocks which comes out of volcanic eruption may exhibit better bond strength due to lime silica reaction. You know we have mentioned about pozzolanic reactions earlier. So, extrusive rocks are those which comes out of the lava which forms from the lava you know extrusion on the vol volcanic eruption and forms from lava. They might contain large quantity of silica and which are reactive silica as high as 40 to 70 percent silica may be present which are reactive silica in those. And this reactive silica because as we have understood from pozzolana's behavior of pozzolana uh, when we talked about uh, pozzolanic cement PPC etcetera, we said that the clay particle which is heated up and cooled exposed to atmosphere suddenly cooled rapidly they may have a tendency to react with lime and that is reactive silica. So, some of those aggregates may have some reactive silica and when they are present they may react with the lime present in the aggregate and thereby give you a kind of chemical bonding but that is not, those are not very usual. Some other calcareous aggregate has, has been reported to show some sort of chemical bonding namely uh, uh, you know like some calcium carbonate reacting with the calcium hydroxide and forming solid solution calcium carbonate reacting with the calcium hydroxide and forming solid solution and they might have shown uh, they have shown some higher strength. But by and large aggregate really do not show uh, they are supposed to be inert and do not show chemical bond. Thus, some aggregates exhibit chemical bonding, not all. Well, but mainly it is the physical and mechanical bonding which are important. Right. Some early work people have tried to actually develop linear relationship in of this form linear relationship of this form f0 b1 m b2 m2 etc etc some constants here uh, the f is stands for strength and uh, this is the actually one is the page strength other is the bond strength so linear linear relationship with the bond strength and page strength they try to relate the concrete uh, uh, strength uh, pretty simplistic relationship actually so one of them is a flexural strength other is the bond strength and you know this was proposed and goodness good fit was observed very good fit was observed as we shall see see later on in the next slide very good fits were observed and this good fit confirms that both page strength and bond strength governs the strength of concrete okay so this is what it is good page strength and bond strength govern the concrete and these are the fit this is the relationship compressive strength versus compressive strength of uh, actually uh, 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 estimated compressive strength this is this is actually estimated the measured compressive strength estimated compressive strength from those formula and they found that both measured and experimental they fit really very well almost in a straight line 45 degree close to 45 degree. So, there is a good correlation between the estimated strength from the model that has been proposed and actually measured strength. Similarly, when they looked into a flexural strength of concrete specimen measured and estimated 
through this relationship, similar linear relationship, simple regression analysis, simple curve fitting, you know, linear uh, linear fit was obtained. So, it is empirical relationship and they found that this was, uh, it, it shows good relationship, you know, it is mainly from the work of uh, generally a work of Alexander, uh, one Alexander who did this work and from this it was observed. Now, one would like to conclude from this that it is the pace strength and it is the, uh, you know, bond strength between paste aggregate bond is the governing factor for the strength of concrete, right? It is the governing factor for the strength of concrete. So, this again we, we reiterate or re, 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 you know, re confirm the fact that it is the aggregate mortar, aggregate paste interface that is a bond between aggregate and paste and the paste strength themselves which are the governing factor for strength of concrete. Right. So, this is this is what we look. Now, let us see how the, the aggregate themselves affect. You see few things have become clear from our discussion so far that uh, uh, perhaps cement strength do not so strongly affect the uh, strength of concrete and also it is important to understand that you cannot ignore the effect of aggregates uh, uh, in you know in strength of concrete. It will be further clear when you look further into the effect of aggregate properties. So, strength of concrete is a function of strength of paste and paste aggregate bond, but many of these are influenced by the aggregate, you know aggregate themselves various properties of aggregate. For example, strength of aggregate is an important factor. Now, if you look at this ordinary concrete water cement ratio versus strength, it will come like this. But if you put lightweight aggregate, then the strength would be something like this. In fact, in fact, an experimentation done uh, with say let us say small brick pieces, burnt clay brick pieces, you break them down into crust, so crush them down into aggregate sizes, sieve them and they are relatively weak. Take uh, poor quality brick and do an experiment, try to put them into the aggregate and uh, uh, find out the strength. You will find there is a significant reduction in the strength compared to a strong aggregate. In normal strength concrete what we do? We actually normal strength concrete we use aggregate which are sufficiently strong, quite strong. But if you use a weak aggregate then the strength will come down, strength will come down. Now, this diagram shows that actually when you have lightweight aggregate concrete which are relatively less strong they are weak because they are porous in nature. So, as long as water cement ratio is high, okay, strength reduction it follows similar sort of curve, but at very high lower you know at lower water cement ratio it, it simply does not show any improvement uh, in strength because this itself is porous. So, the reduction in porosity due to reduction in water cement ratio is ineffective here and therefore, the strength does not reduce at all. So, strength of aggregate is very, very important because strength of aggregate is again governed by the pores in them, pores inside the aggregate. Normally, this is very, very small in case of strong aggregates. In lightweight aggregates or something like brick, brick bats, you know, brick broken brick pieces, uh, clay brick pieces of lower strength, if you make aggregate strong, I mean concrete out of them, they will show you much lower strength. So, aggregate strength has a role to play in the strength of concrete. Yeah, weaker aggregate, aggregate exhibits lower strength, cracks propagates through the aggregate and thus lowering water cement ratio is ineffective in this one, in this case. So, that is the idea because there are a lot of pores in them itself and the crack will pass through this. In high strength concrete, this is a, this is a, as I mentioned earlier, in high strength concrete the cracks passes through the aggregate themselves because in high strength concrete what you do? You improve the paste, you increase the strength of the paste, improve it. You will also improve the paste aggregate interface, paste aggregate interface that is the ITZ by inclusion of very fine uh, pozzolana and water reducing agent etcetera, etcetera and using very low water cement ratio. So, you improve the paste and paste aggregate interface. Now, the weakest link is not necessarily uh, the paste aggregate interface and paste almost they will be similar to the strength of the aggregates. So, cat can pass through the aggregates themselves as well cracks can pass through the aggregates themselves right cracks can pass through the aggregates themselves okay so that is what it is and you can look into other factor modulus of elastic modulus modulus of elasticity affects the concrete fracture properties and then affects the strength because if you remember we talked about griffith's uh, uh, critical stress where we e was coming into picture 
if you look into fracture toughness, the ease again fracture toughness is a function of uh, modulus of elasticity. So, higher the fracture toughness of course, it will have uh, more resistance towards fracture. So, therefore, fracturing of concrete is a function of modulus of elasticity. So, if you have high modulus of elasticity, concrete would uh, you know would show exhibit exhibit higher strength that is well understood. So, that is well understood right. A second aspect is aggregate with higher modulus shares more load at a, at a given strain shares more load at a given strain and, and uh, relieves the uh, paste you know uh, aggregate with higher modulus shares more load at a given strain and relieves the paste. And the whole idea is supposing I have when I have loaded a concrete specimen uh, since they are bonded with the aggregates and paste are bonded there is a bond existing between the two they will be undergoing same deformation at their interface. In other words, they will be under same strain. Now, under same strain the load would be the strain multiplied by the modulus of elasticity, strain multiplied by the modulus of elasticity. So, strain multiplied by the modulus of elasticity right. So, higher mod so load carried by each individual component will be strain. Now, strains are same in both of them whichever has got higher modulus the load carried by that would be more because P 1 let us say or P aggregate will be epsilon the strain multiplied by the modulus of elasticity of the aggregate. The paste will have epsilon same epsilon multiplied by the modulus of elasticity of the uh, paste. So, that is the load carried. So, which will carry more load the aggregate will carry more load. So, therefore, it will relieve the paste of some load. So, that is the other idea why modulus of elasticity tends to give you higher modulus of elasticity tends to give you uh, higher modulus of elasticity tends to give you higher strength. What about size of the aggregate? It has been observed that for high MSA strength is lower. For example, this diagram will show you if you have 5 millimeter you know water cement ratio versus compressive strength as you can see water cement ratio versus compressive strength. So, when you have 5 millimeter maximum size of aggregate its strength is higher even 10 millimeter it is somewhat lower for the same water cement ratio you take any water cement ratio and it is 19 mm it will be still lower strength. So, higher the aggregate size or maximum size of aggregate diameter d max you know uh, lower is the strength lower is the strength that is the observation. Let me just digress a little bit from this in normal strength concrete we use around 20 mm MSA quite often and sometime even 40 mm MSA. In mass concrete of course, we go to 150 millimeter uh, MSA very low strength mass concrete you know dam concrete. And when it comes to high strength concrete we do not use more than uh, 10 or 12 millimeter 12.5 millimeter aggregate mostly 10 mm. And you look at to further high strength system for example, reactive powder concrete does not use as coarse aggregate at all the sand below 0.6 micron is used. So, higher and higher is the strength of the concrete use smaller and smaller maximum size of aggregate. Now, we have of course, understood what maximum size of aggregate do to water uh, content required or workability, but as far as strength is concerned it reduces down the strength. Uh, now, another diagram is here we will explain this diagram a little bit later on. This shows that MSA along this direction right. So, 152 mm etcetera etcetera 75 mm and so on so forth and when you have 170 kg of cement this shows this is for 170 kg uh, of uh, cement per uh, kg of cement per meter cube kg of cement content and this is in pound per yard cube within bracket. Now, you have low cement content as, as you increase the MSA it increases, but it does not increase further beyond this point because it is almost becoming a straight line. You go to this when you have got 250 kg of cement, 280 kg of cement per meter cube and it actually does not show any increase further. And if you go still further 330 it will show maximum at this MSA the strength is maximum then it even decreases a little bit. And for further increase in the cement content you will see that uh, in fact beyond a point it starts decreasing. So, what we see is the there is an in this case there is an optimal MSA beyond which strength will not be increased strength before that strength is lower. So, you go on increasing the MSA strength increases up to certain point and then it start decreasing. And this point MSA this MSA is higher optimal MSA is higher 
for lower uh, cement content concrete or leaner concrete. For richer concrete this value reduces and reduces and if I further extend this to higher cement content I will find that this value becomes smaller and smaller. And that is why when you have a very high strength system uh, just you know MSA becomes simply we do not, do not, do not use even coarse aggregate at all much smaller than this. So, let us see what are the explanation for this one. First of all presence of coarse aggregate particles introduces uh, stress concentration because it is non-uniformity in the structure. It is a non-uniformity in the structure of the you know matrix and then you have some inclusion inside this. We said paste act as a matrix and the coarse aggregate particles or aggregate particles themselves are sort of uh, dispersed within that. So, they act as inclusion. So, for the stress flow that would introduce a kind of discontinuity and stress concentration at the boundary of the aggregate. right? Now, larger the aggregate size volume region of stress concentration around an aggregate particle will become larger and through a less, lesser surface area it has to the same stress has to pass through a lesser surface area because for the same volume larger aggregate size means lesser surface area. So, through lesser surface area when it is to pass stress concentration effect is higher. So, when you have larger size of aggregate when aggregate sizes are, sizes are larger the stress concentration effect tends to reduce it is non-uniformity it is a discontinuity because you have you are adding another material which is stronger compared to the paste and in normal strength concrete it would tend to give you you know this this discontinuity tends to give you uh, lower strength. In fact, your also your your um, uh, more aggregate I mean larger aggregate would also mean that larger size of possibly the um, uh, interfacial interfacial discontinuity or interfacial pores etcetera. So, it has been observed that this shows uh, lower strength as we increase MSA as we, as we increase MSA. Final very fine as I said very high strength system we do not use. Uh, we do not use coarse aggregate at all, we use fine aggregate alone and we try to make it as uniform as possible, as uniform as possible. Okay. So, now coming to the second graph as we have seen, lean concrete MSC is higher, this is because lower requirement of paste and water. See in lean concrete paste requirement will be lower for the same workability, you can make a workable concrete with much less water. So, even if you use less cement it will be it will have you know you can have relatively low water cement ratio. So, for a given fixed cement content low cement content and fixed uh, workability I can go on reducing the water and I will still get the same workability you know whatever the uh, workability. So, I can go on uh, reducing the so if I increase the MSA if I increase the MSA I can reduce the water. And maintain the same workability. So, I go on increasing the MSA maintaining the same workability my water requirement would be reduced every time and in the process water cement ratio itself will reduce giving strength increase in you know higher higher and higher strength higher and higher strength. So, that is what it is lower water requirement requirement of paste and water thus lower water cement ratio you know can give, give you can use higher MSA. But for higher strength when you have higher strength because now you have low cement. So, low water cement ratio. Now, supposing in high strength you have somewhat higher higher cement, higher cement you go to lower water cement ratio, higher cement you go to low water cement ratio, uh, strength would tend to increase, but when strength increases to maintain this strength the stress concentration effect has to be reduced. So, where in richer mixes actually stress concentration effect starts dominating beyond a point MSA as you go on increasing the MSA and thereby or other other effects as I said that there could be larger uh, size of the uh, ITZ porosity all this actually tends to reduce down the uh, reduce down the strength and you cannot reduce the water content much there because uh, paste content required will be relatively high. So, all these factors actually brings down the strength beyond a point and that is how it was the effect of MSA on strength effect of MSA effect of MSA on strength right this is the effect of MSA on strength. Okay. If I see aggregate content that is aggregate to cement ratio interesting results were obtained. Some people found that uh, if you have high 
aggregate content the strength reduces. On the other hand some other people found other way round. We will just first look into the first case and what was the explanation given. Then we will look into the second case and the explanation given and thirdly what is by and large acceptable. So, first case it was observed that you see the for the same water cement ratio relative strength of concrete if one looks at you know one calls this some 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 strength as uh, 1 and 1 is to 3 this strength is some one relative strength it has been talked about. So, paste is supposed to have higher strength for the same water cement ratio and as I go on increasing the aggregate to cement ratio mortar for example 1 is to 2 1 is to 3 mortar the strength seems to increase and when I have a concrete 1 is to 3 is to 4.5 it is supposed to have higher strength. So, when I increase the aggregate content either fine or coarse the strength increases and paste has got the higher strength. Well, this is not necessarily the general experience, but, but this is finding out of particular experimental results and the explanation given was that particle separation reduces between the between the aggregate you know when you increase the aggregate content. Now, where if you have less particle separation between the aggregates, if you have less particle separation between the aggregates then what will happen? The because fracture initiates from ITZ from the aggregate interface. So, since the fracture initiates from the aggregate interface it has to travel through smaller path lesser path if the particle separations are less. So, it has to travel through lesser path if the particle separations are less and in such situation what will happen the strength will be reduced strength will be reduced. So, if you add aggregate to it particle separations are less and therefore strength goes reduced. This is what one of the explanations given to this case experiment that was obtained, but the opposite conclusion was drawn from by many other people. In fact, this experience the exactly opposite was more where it was observed that higher aggregate to cement aggregate ratio you know 1 is to 5.5, 1 is to 4.5, 1 is to 2.5. Now, if you consider same water cement ratio any water cement ratio you will find that the lower lower the higher the aggregate content higher the aggregate content higher is the strength lower the aggregate content strength is less. So, paste is not necessarily higher strength you know uh, that is that is what this experience would say. So, this was actually attributed to basically discontinuity introduction of discontinuity by uh, uh, you know uh, this was attributed to uh, discontinuity that is introduced by aggregate and the stress concentration and overlapping volumes of stress concentration you know because when you have more aggregates they come closer to each other. So, stress concentration area gets overlapped and you have a kind of average stress of the whole less effect of stress concentration has been given as the explanation because you, when you have more aggregate more and more aggregate effect of stress concentration would be reduced because it would tend to cause overlapping of the volume or region of region of stress concentration and kind of average stress that uh, that that would be you know stress concentration effect would be reduced on that was the explanation given right. Moreover it was another idea which is given was that more secondary cracks are possible when you have more aggregate content. It means you know simultaneously lot of cracks would develop if you have less aggregate less aggregate then only few cracks would develop at the aggregate interface and that would finally, cause cracking. Energy required to you know like uh, create new surfaces would be more when you have multiple cracks, but uh, most of them do not actually convert into a complete failure plane only one finally a critical one possibly does. So, when you have to produce multiple uh, um, uh, you know multiple surfaces multiple surfaces multiple cracked surfaces you require lot more strain energy and therefore, it can stay into uh, send lot more strain energy and that is the idea given as far as this is concerned that is the idea given as far as this uh, explanation is concerned. Okay. Now, generally accepted is a second idea generally accepted is a strength increases with aggregate content generally accepted is a strength increases with aggregate content. Uh, especially in normal strength concrete with increased aggregate content capillary porosity is a third third explanation also given is that cap when increased ca aggregate content may reduce the capillary porosity because capillary porosity is essentially is a part of uh, paste system and therefore, it might reduce the capillary porosity and may decrease also average stress in the zone of stress concentration. Okay, cracks uh, uh, lesser cracks could be formed uh, I mean more cracks are formed and therefore, it can absorb a lot of energy all this put together this has been the general 
idea accepted in normal strength concrete, in normal strength concrete because the page strength is relatively low, page strength is relatively low, aggregate strength is higher, you know page modulus is low, aggregate modulus is higher. So, when you add more and more aggregate it tends to show you uh, somewhat higher uh, strength, but that does not mean that all aggregate would have, you must have sufficient aggregate to have the right kind of workability. So, that is the case if you have higher aggregate concentration maintaining the work, uh, workability proper this possibly would give you better strength in normal strength concrete. In high strength concrete or very high strength system in fact, you can have sufficiently large paste content to take care of say in reactive powder concrete to take care of the shrinkage effects etcetera because uh, uh, shrinkage effects uh, starts dominating in this ones. And since aggregate do not shrink the paste shrinks. So, if you have a small quantity of paste they might introduce shrinkage cracks at the aggregate uh, uh, cracks at the I T Z. But on the other hand if you have large amount of paste and some aggregates are embedded in them as the whole paste as a whole will shrink and uh, there will be no tensile stresses at I T Z rather there will be a compressive stress because paste will also shrink together with the uh, I mean aggregate will also shrink together with the paste. So, that is the kind of idea about aggregate content, but normal concrete if you increase the aggregate content tends seems to increase. So, long as you have sufficient amount of paste to maintain the workability of concrete and fill in all the void space and slightly more. Okay, let us look into another case air entrainment. We have seen that strength is related to water to cement ratio through porosity and pore sizes. Uh, okay. uh, this we have understood from our previous discussion then strength is related to water to cement ratio because water to cement ratio increases the porosity and also increases the pore sizes in bulk paste as well as its interfacial transition zone. And I would again repeat this because this is the most important factor water cement ratio actually causes increase in porosity and also pore sizes both in bulk paste as well as ITZ. And therefore, uh, this is what this is what actually causes higher water cement ratio causes reduction in strength. This is the most important factor the other factors are there like we talked about aggregate uh, type and uh, if you know aggregate properties etcetera etcetera. But most important factor is this fundamental this is the first thing you know this is the major controlling factor other factors are of course next. So, this is true for concrete we have understood this in our previous lecture and we just repeat this that this is very very important and same Abraham's law similar other laws are existing Ferret's law uh, there are gel space ratio relationship, but uh, this seems to be uh, most acceptable in many mix design procedure some variation of this form in graphical form etcetera etcetera. So, uh, that is why I am repeating this there are some other relationship also exist some other relationship exist. Mm, okay. So, this seems to be very valid even in case of concrete like the cement paste we yesterday we mentioned and uh, as water cement ratio increases strength reduces K1 and K2 are some constants depending upon type of aggregate type of cement everything all other things remaining constant strength of concrete is inversely proportional to uh, you know in power inversely proportional in terms of power to water cement ratio to water cement ratio right that is the most important idea. Now, what happens if I have air entrainment? Air entrainment also introduces pores and pores fine pores fine of course, in the sense that not really compaction pores, but they are macro pores again and well distributed throughout the uh, st structure or throughout the cement matrix and they are closed pore system they are closed pore system. However, they will reduce down the strength because pores porosity closed or interconnected both will reduce down the strength. So, they would reduce down the strength even though the interfacial ITZ porosity or at the large aggregate interface the pore or fissures that would be existing in the beginning might be still larger than this pore sizes air entrained pore sizes you know larger than air entrained pore sizes and therefore, crack might initiate from those places, but this will help because they can crack can propagate through the air entrained pore. One of the ways people try to relate this is to because we do not have a really I mean you know you can the from fundamental concepts the strength compressive strength of concrete relating it to the fundamental properties it is still awaiting this uh, this relationship is an empirical relationship. And to use this in an empirical relationship one of the ways is use equivalent water cement ratio as W plus delta A where a delta A is the air content and then use W A by C 
relationship W A by C relationship. Use W plus delta A divided by C relationship for uh, water cement ratio for water cement ratio in the same relationship water cement ratio in the same relationship to get the strength of concrete. So, this is how air entrainment it reduces can reduce the strength as much as 5 percent or so, but if you do not mind because it gives you other positive effect in terms of freeze thaw resistance. So, where freeze thaw resistance is a concern you know where in cold climate where freezing is a problem still we can use air entrainment and sacrifice 5 percent of the strength does not matter because I can design my concrete if I know how it behaves I have no problem you know if 5 percent strength is there I do not mind losing that 5 percent strength. What I will do? I will do my mix design accordingly. When things are happening by design there is no problem, but if it happens by default then there is a problem. Here I know that there will be a loss in strength and accordingly I design the concrete for the strength right and uh, uh, there is no problem I can it can take care of my freeze thaw resistances and also improves the uh, workability as a kind of fringe benefit. Right, compaction pores will also behave exactly in the same manner. Compaction pores will also behave exactly in the same manner because they are also pores. But you see, they are much larger size pore, and it is difficult to define what the compaction pores would look like. But they can be anything. Honeycombs would be very weak points. So compaction pores, if there are air remaining, air remaining in the concrete system, if the air is remaining in the concrete system, and you have not been able to effectively drive it out during compaction they will introduce uh, you know they will reduce down the strength. Although there is no way to take this only thing is you make proper compaction and air content of the concrete is taken care of in mix design right. So, that is what it is. Let us see what is the effect of compaction. This is what is the effect of compaction you know water cement ratio versus compress compressive strength. Supposing I do a full compaction fully compacted concrete with vibration only with vibrations only uh, no problem, but standard proper kind of vibrations. So, if I do hand compaction I will find insufficiently compacted concrete as I go to the low water cement ratio because the flowability of the concrete will be less a very high water cement ratio concrete would require very less, less you know less of what. So, hand compaction also you can do. So, very high water you know flow water cement ratio concrete in other words weak concrete leaner concrete you can even do hand compaction. But when it comes to stronger concrete if you do it you will find there is a reduction because you will introduce lot more compaction pores and even vibration in some cases can introduce lot more compaction pores. So, proper vibration full compaction should be achieved especially in by with very all kind of efforts in low water cement ratio concrete. So, uh, compaction is very very important and one has to ensure that you get compaction do not get compaction pores effect of age if you look at it uh, this is water cement ratio versus again compressive strength of concrete and you can see as it changes with the age uh, this is this is uh, uh, this is uh, you know uh, this is uh, two different concretes 3 days 7 days. So, as I increase the 1 day concrete 3 days concrete right. So, as I increase the uh, as I increase the uh, concrete uh, I mean age the strength of concrete increases because this curves are this is for one day curves these are three days curves and the, the as age increases strength also increases. So, strength also increases right now the different grades of concrete etcetera etcetera. Now why does it increase because degree of hydration would be more. In other words, the hydration product filling in the void space would be more. If you remember when we talked of curing, we said that the hydration product uh, through curing only you achieve uh, discontinuity of pore system, you know, segmentation of capillaries, it is possible. What we mean is you have a cement particle, it requires time to actually hydrate. So, initially, some part, some portion of the cement particle will hydrate and then as it would actually fill in some of the originally water filled space uh, through the hydration product and as you continue to as you continue the curing process in other words as the age increases more and more particle will hydrate and they will occupy the spore space that was occupied by the water before and therefore overall reduction in the porosity would be there. 
So, therefore, since there is an overall reduction in the porosity, since there is an overall reduction in the porosity, therefore, uh, since there is an overall reduction in the porosity, strength would increase. Not only it is the overall reduction in the porosity, the pore sizes will also reduce because initial initial size of the void space or water filled space depends upon of course the amount of water presence with respect to cement and now uh, it would get filled in by the hydration product. Now uh, two things more and more this space get filled in is sizes get reduced not only the volume of pores would get reduced sizes of the pores will get reduced because initially it is all interconnected water space water field space interconnected water field space. Now as the hydration progresses after some time there will be segmentation of the capillaries they would get blocked. Now this port space uh, you know there will be then isolated pores let us say low relatively uh, lower water cement ratio much lower than 0 0.7 say 0 0.5 0 0.4 etc etc. So as the as the hydration progresses sometime they will get uh, actually capillaries will get segmented. So, if they are segmented they are now isolated pores. This isolated pore has got a given size as an as further hydration progresses the size of the pore will also reduce. So, it is not only the volume of the pores which will reduce with age and hydration it will it also reduce you know size also reduces and therefore, since the size of the pore and volume of porosity pores both reduces strength increases with age and uh, the relationship of water cement ratio to uh, strength is something of this kind. So, you can understand age is a factor. Well, for that is why normally we take 28 days strength, of course, it will depend upon type of cement. Rapid hardening cement would give you high early strength, right. The nature of the strength increase with age would not be same for it would not be same for uh, given you know for two different types of cement. For a given type of cement, it remains of course constant, and for uh, different types of cement, actually it would change. So, this is what is shown in this diagram. So, let us look overall factors affecting strength of concrete. Now, this diagram shows you overall factors affecting strength of concrete. You see this is the strength of concrete and uh, production factor of course, then this dictates final strength of concrete. You know production factors this is the strength of concrete. So, this small factor let us say production factor means mixing, uh, batching, mixing, how accurate they are. We have discussed this all together production factors means batching, mixing transportation, placing and compacting and curing all these are production factors. So, they control the strength of concrete that is what we have seen. Now, let us see what are the other things we have seen that paste aggregate bond is the one which strongly controls the strength of concrete and strength of the paste itself control the con strength of concrete. In addition to we have seen the quality of aggregate out of which concentration means aggregate content how much concentration of the aggregate is there the MSA and it is modulus of elasticity these are the three major factors from aggregates point of view they control the strength of concrete ok. So, production plus factors paste aggregate bond and strength of paste. Now, if this is the cons aggregate content you know quality of aggregate if you see it controls this concentration particle size and modulus of elasticity. If you go back this quality of aggregate again controls a chemical chemical uh, composition of you know of the concrete can give you better bond as we have seen in some cases, but surface characteristics is one of the major thing that is surface roughness and surface roughness and uh, pores surface pores if there are surface pores they will bond better. So, some quality of aggregate improves the paste aggregate bond that is what we have seen today. We have also seen that some properties of aggregates will be controlling the strength of concrete directly. Now, come to the strength of paste several things would govern the strength of paste. First of all let us look at it strength of paste will be governed by the porosity of the paste itself the moisture content of course, would govern uh, paste when you know paste strength is also governed by the moisture content of the paste. We shall see the effect of moisture content of strength of concrete and cube, uh, you know concrete cubes sometimes in connection with the test. So, you will see that moisture content actually governs the strength of paste. Then porosity uh, porosity in fact uh, one, one, one factor that would go, go, govern this is the strength of the paste governs this. Now, strength of the paste and strength of the bond both so, you know, strength of the paste governs this and uh, uh, you can see the porosity which is controlled by water cement ratio then degree of hydration age we said. So, degree of hydration and water cement ratio controls the porosity. 
Also gel structure which is governed by admixtures, curing conditions, age of the paste and type of cement. So, type of cement, age of the paste, curing condition, curing condition and admixtures all actually govern the all actually govern the curing condition, age of the paste and uh, uh, type of cement and admixtures all govern the structure, gel structure and its composition structure of the gel structure you know CHS gel that we mentioned and this in turn actually controls the strength of the paste. Now, this also this admixtures also can control the degree of hydration because you can have something like um, accelerators or retarders. So, this can govern the degree of hydration together with water cement ratio controls the porosity and degree of hydration is also governed by curing condition, age and type of cement. So, Finally, you can see strength of concrete is governed by all these factors and it is essential to understand, <coughs> it is essential to understand all the water cement ratio is the major factor controlling the strength of paste, I mean strength of paste, the other factors aggregate properties they also do contribute. The cement alone does not contribute to the strength of concrete. Main factor of course, has been recognized as water cement ratio because even this bond will be controlled by water cement ratio although this diagram does not show this, but ITZ characteristics is controlled by water cement ratio particularly the bleed water the shrinkage these are controlled by uh, the you know water cement ratio. So, water cement ratio plays a very strong role in strength of concrete. In addition, the cement also plays a role in strength of concrete. In addition, cement also plays a role in cement also plays a role in strength of and aggregate plays a very strong role. So, you cannot ignore the effect of others. Most important is water cement ratio. Most important is water cement ratio. Others do play a role. That includes both aggregate as well as cement, both aggregate as well as cement. So, relating say strength of concrete alone to cement strength or alone to aggregate strength. Uh, this uh, you know for, for for I mean alone to cement strength or alone to aggregate strength or for a given water cement ratio to either only aggregate strength or to cement strength is not really may not be really very scientific. Strength should be related to water cement ratio and you know this should preferably be related to all factors together and that is what Abraham's law does. It relates it to the strength and the constant that I mentioned earlier K1 and K2 are actually related to the strength, the, 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 the constant K1 and K2, these are related to both cement, all cement and aggregate, both cement and aggregate system, right. right? So, that is what is the strength of concrete. So, if we summarize uh, today's discussion, uh, we had uh, we discussed the role of um, concrete strength if we summarize, first we looked into role of paste, role of uh, ITZ, then role of porosity and today we actually looked into uh, from fundamentals we went today, today we went a little bit beyond and we looked into uh, the role of uh, aggregates mainly compaction etcetera, etcetera. But still fundamentally it is a uh, uh, fundamentally it is it is it is the you know uh, porosity and pore sizes that finally governs the strength of concrete and that is controlled uh, porosity and pore sizes uh, that is controlled by both ITZ characteristics and bulk paste porosity both and that is mainly controlled by water cement ratio. So we have seen that water cement ratio of course affect the strength of concrete but further we have seen that in addition to that. Uh, bond characteristics is governed somewhat by uh, cement, somewhat by cement although higher strength cement not necessarily give you higher bond strength, but we have also seen that aggregate has a got a strong role to play as far as uh, strength of concrete is concerned. So, in the next class, uh, next lecture we will look into the test aspect of uh, you know the test the, because test factors control the cube strength as we measure the measured strength and in our next lecture we shall look into uh, the, uh, uh, the aspects of the test which actually controls the strength. So, that uh, that would uh, uh, give us a brief idea of the cube strength which we started in the first class. 
to uh, you know uh, various factors which affect the cube strength both measurement as well as the factors related to the mix parameter. Thank you.